Hello and welcome to the video. In this video it's to explain a couple of things I've figured out in OpenTX about setting up a traditional swash based controlled helicopter. Now for those of you that have watched the channel for a long time you'll know that I came to the multi-rotors via helicopters. I was originally a heli pilot with fixed wing as well and now I fly pretty much exclusively multi-rotors. So I've not had to set up OpenTX with a swash plate based helicopter. Now, modern helicopters with using fly barless control units, the setup in OpenTX is a lot easier. You don't need to do any cyclic mixing or worry about your pitch levels and all that kind of jazz. You kind of set that up with the fly bar unit itself. But this video has been specifically made in response to a request from a gentleman called Paul Davies. Now, Paul's one of my Patreons, so when he gave me a shout for a bit of help with this, I was duty bound to sit down and figure this out. So I thought I'd create a video and pass on some of the stuff that I figured out because not all of this is documented very well at all. This is probably one of the weakest part of OpenTX. It's actually quite a capable thing to set up a helicopter with a traditional swash plate, uh, but it just needs a little bit of thought and a little bit of working through. This video is not aimed for those of you that have never set up a swash plate helicopter before, but if you're coming to this video and you're a heli pilot and you've used things like Fatarba and Spectrum radios that have much better wizards and setup options in the menu for a swash plate helicopter and you've got an OpenTX powered radio and just sat there wondering what the blooming hell you do with it, hopefully this will help. Because in this video I'm going to talk about four things really. First of all is how you set up the cyclic. Second of all is then how you set up the pitch adjustment for zero throttle to get the swash plate at exactly the right height and level. Then we'll talk a little bit about swash plate travel so that you have the right positive and negative pitch on your blades. And finally we'll talk a little bit about idle up and use of curves so that you can also flick between different modes as well on your helicopter. Now hopefully by going through that, those of you that have a little bit of experience with helicopters, it will give you enough to roll your sleeves up and finish your setups. So here is my helicopter model. I'll just show you how this is working. I'll simulate it, a little QX7. And the way it works is that channels one is going to be connected to the ESC, the throttle control on my helicopter. And Channels 2, 3 and 4 are going to be the cyclic servos connected to a 120 degree swash plate. Pretty standard stuff on an awful lot of helicopters, a line and others. As I increase the throttle, you can see that the swash plate is rising and falling. And as I move the elevator forward, you can see the three servos moving to push the swash plate forward. And similarly, as I move them left and right, the aileron is controlling the pitch laterally as well to give me the swash plate movement left and right too. So how, how have I done that? So the first thing we need to look at is going into the heli mode. And uh, what I've done here is picked the swash type. There's only four to choose from. So you're gonna have to cho choose one of these and try them each in turn to see which one is working with your model. 120, 120X, 140 and 90. Majority of us are probably gonna be using 120 or 120X. The swash ring, number uh, really struggle to figure out what, what this does but let me kind of show you if i set that up to 100 percent let me simulate it again as i increase the throttle and then move the swash plate to the top let me just do that uh, you can see that the tilt in the swash plate these would be the back two servos this would be the front servo so the swash plate is tipping forward you can see that that is giving a quite a big move if we change that down to 50% and we do the same thing, simulate again. And you can see that the amount of tilt is a lot less. So that seems to be what that number is doing. It's kind of setting the maximum tilt on the swash plate by default. The longitudinal cyclic is being controlled by elevator as we've just seen. The lateral cyclic is controlled by the aileron and the collective or the height of the swash plate is controlled by the throttle and that's pretty standard stuff at the moment i've just left all, left all of the strengths as 100 percent so that's telling OpenTX how to mix the standard inputs that we'd have on any model into a swash mix essentially for the swash plate now on the mixes what you need to do then is for the three output servos that you're going to connect to your swash plate, you need to assign them as cyclic one, cyclic two, 
and cyclic 3. And those are the three ones there. Don't worry about these extra bits, we'll cover them in a second. But it's by nominating that these are actually cyclic servos that means that it's going to take all of the inputs and do all of the funky mixing so that as you move things around, all of those servos are working in concert to connect you up to the cyclic. Of course, if you find that the direction is the wrong way around, then you can, of course, change the polarity of any one of these controls, and then it'll move in a different way. So now you can see that rather than the channel 2 going down when I put the elevator to the front or the cyclic to the forward position, it's now going the other way around. So that's the way with that as well. Let me put that back. So that's how you change direction. So that's the basic cyclic setup. Next thing we'll talk about then is zero pitch adjustment. So normally you're going to put your measuring gauge on your swash plate and then you need to make sure that it's completely level. That's standard stuff. Now we've got this, we've got channel two, channel three and channel four. We can use the sub trims on channel two, channel three and channel four to make sure that the swash plate rests in exactly the right position. Swash plate travel is an interesting one. So if we go back to our simulator. The way I've got it set up at the moment is I used to fly my Align helicopters uh, normally for something like minus two degrees up to about positive nine or ten degrees, which is kind of what that's showing. If this is the maximum travel on here is something like plus 11 to minus 11 degrees, this will be taking me to about minus two, minus three, up to positive 11 as I raise the swash plate. I can also flick it into idle up mode and now I get full travel and the throttle never actually falls. Now to do that I'm actually using curves. So let me show you that. So what I've done is I've set up and for those of you that have heli experience all this is going to be like oh, okay right I, I know where we are now. So I've got two curves. Curve one is going to set up my swash plate movement between the positive 11 degrees and I just basically move that until I've got the right positive pitch that I'm interested in and similarly moving this one until I've got the right negative pitch that I'm interested in and just using the curve to sort that out. A standard three point curve would work perfectly. So I've created a couple of flight modes here just so that I can have it displayed on the screen. I've got flight mode zero is set for normal, flight mode one is set for idle up and that's turned on when I have SA in the middle position. So that's what's happening if I simulate and move SA. That's why the name is appearing here on the screen and you might have two idle up positions depending on whether or not you want really aggressive movement on your swash plate. So what I'm doing in the mixes then is I'm saying in standard flying mode, normal mode, uh, use the curve CV01. That's going to make sure that the pitch doesn't go lower than the minus two, minus three degrees that I've got it set to, and only turn it on in flight mode zero, which is that kind of normal mode. And that is set on each of the cyclics. The other one that I've got set up here is for mode one, and that is the full mode or idle up. And I'm saying don't use a curve at all for this use the full travel. So again, the way that's working is in normal mode, I've got kind of minus two to plus 11 or whatever I've set it to by using a pitch gauge and setting that curve to do the right thing. And if we go into idle up, then I'm getting full travel. But again, if I didn't want that full travel, I could use a curve to just limit the maximum travel on each of those cyclic servos. Last thing to talk about then is how we're going to do the last bit of idle up. So because the throttle behaves differently in idle up as well, so let me just put it into normal mode. So normal mode, channel one again is throttle, goes from 100% throttle down to zero, standard stuff. If I flick it into idle up, then standard settings, it kind of just has a little V shape. And the way I'm doing that is on this line. So again, jumping into curves, curve two, is my throttle idle up curve. So it's 100% at zero throttle, drops to 50%, goes to 100% as well as we pour on the power. And then in mixes, I have a standard 
throttle for flight mode zero which is normal mode and that has nothing particularly set up that's just going to pass the throttle through directly but if we go into flight mode one which is the idle up mode then the throttle is going to be controlled by curve cv02 and that is that v-shaped throttle that's going to make sure that it never drops below 50 percent so hopefully that is interesting to those of you that are thinking of setting up a helicopter and it gives you some of the ideas, tips and tricks to start the setup on OpenTX for your particular model. Thanks again for Paul for giving me a kick up the butt to figure some of this out and hopefully the video has shed a little bit more light on this for some other pilots too. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.